God, this is how I feel. For God is the joy and the strength of my life. Removes all pain, misery, and strife. Promise to keep me, never to leave me. Never, ever come short of His word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with Him when He comes back. Come too far and I'll never turn back. God is, God is, God is, God is, God is.
Is it a right of testify? Oh, let's take a trip down memory lane. Every trial, every trial that you've seen me through. Oh, I'll lift my hands and say hallelujah. Think about it and say, yeah, you pray. month of July. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about, our, our title for this month's series is entitled Process, I'm sorry, this month's series is entitled Fighting for My Purpose. Fighting for My Purpose. But the message for today is entitled Process for Purpose. How many of you know that to get to our purpose, to get to our calling, we have to first be processed? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for our purpose. We thank you for our calling. Help us, strengthen us, and prepare us for what it is you called us to do here in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to do me a favor and lift your hands right where you are, at your dinner table, in your bedroom, wherever you are. I want you to lift your hands and say, process for purpose. And if you, if you can, just go ahead and type it. Go ahead and type it in the chat. Process for purpose. And as I begin to walk out my own personal purpose, I realize that there's a process that we all have to go through. How many of you know that you have a process? Raise your hand. In the, how many of you know that you have a purpose? Raise your hand in the chat. And a lot of you may be saying, well, Pastor, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, by the end of this month, you're going to be one step closer to realizing why God created you. You're going to be one step closer to knowing what your purpose is, why God placed you here in the earth realm, because he placed each and every one of us here for a reason. It's called your purpose. It's called your calling. So I believe that the process, I believe that the process that we go through demonstrates our maturity in the things of God. So immaturity equals no process. So in order to get to our purpose, in order to get to our calling, we have to go through a process. And while we're going through that process, it will then mature us for what it is that God has created us for. This generation is always looking for a position. 
This generation is always looking for promotion or something that they do not deserve. And we can't get to all of those things without going through a process. We can't get our promotion until, how can a person on a job give you a promotion? How could God give you a promotion in the kingdom if you haven't done the first initial step yet? So there's a process we have to go through. Just like at McDonald's, how can you be a manager when you haven't worked on the fries yet? How can you be a manager if you haven't worked the drive through yet? There has to be a process. We can't go to all those things where God wants us to be without, we can't skip our process. Majority of people today do not relate process to their purpose and calling because they think that a, a, a purpose, they think that a calling is automatic. Whatever your purpose or calling is, it is not automatic. Just because you know how to sing doesn't mean that you're ready to be a praise and worship leader. Just because you can sing doesn't mean that you're ready for a multi-million dollar record deal. Whether, whether you were called to be a doctor, whether you were called to be an engineer, a custodian, a preacher, a singer, it doesn't just happen overnight. There's a process that we have to go through. It doesn't matter how anointed you are for the job. There's still a process that each and every one of us must go through. Before we came to this earth, we had already existed. Now, I'm going to teach for a minute right now. Before we came to this earth, we were already uh, exist. We already existed millions and billions of years ago. We were spirit beings before we became human beings. And I don't want you to take this message casual because before we get to knowing what our purpose is, we have to first get this teaching right here. So because this reason if you look around in your communities, don't matter where you are, in Georgia, in Miami, in Alabama, most of our youth and others, the reason they are the way they are today is because they don't know their purpose. They don't know why God created them. Let's go to our Bible. Let's go to Psalms chapter 33, verse 11. Psalms 33, verse 11. This is what it says. It says, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Let's stop right there. The counsel of of the Lord standeth forever. Another version says, the purpose of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart through all generations. God connects thoughts with counsel because another definition for the word purpose is the word counsel. So what this scripture is saying as it relates to purpose of God is we were a thought in God's mind before we became a human being. God had us in his mind. The scripture says, the scripture goes on to say that the counsel of the Lord stands forever. And before we became, we already existed in God's mind. So now let's journey to Genesis chapter two, verse seven, Genesis chapter two, verse seven says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Say the word formed for me. Say it to yourself. Say formed. The word formed in Hebrew means to be made. So formed is the process of someone or something to be made. So this scripture simply is saying that man was made. But hold on a minute. In another scripture, I thought I read that man was already created. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. But in Genesis 2 and 7, it says that man was formed. So I don't want you to get confused. So in Genesis 1, 27, the Bible says, that God created man. But then in Genesis 2 and 7, it says the Lord God formed man. So now we have two words. We have created and we have formed. And we're going somewhere with this. The word created, man was created in the spiritual realm before he was formed in the natural. Or should I say the physical realm? We were created in his image in the spiritual realm and then formed in the natural. 
we are still being, we are still a being when we were created in the spirit, but we were spiritual beings first. Before we were human beings, we were spiritual beings. The only difference is when we were spiritual beings, we didn't have a physical body. So we were created, we existed with God a long time ago. How the Jamaicans say, long time. So we've been in the, we've been in existence. And I don't know how long ago before we were then formed and God gave us a body. So now there's formation for us to become a man physically. But there's also a formation for us to become spiritually mature. So the formation or the form that God speaks about in Genesis, it was physical. Because when Adam was created, he was already a full grown man. When Adam came to this earth, it's believed that he was about 30 years old because God gave him dominion, power and authority. You don't give uh, dominion, power and authority to a child. You give it to some. You don't give it to somebody that's immature. That's like saying giving your three year old a driver license. So imagine this. You're Adam, a spirit being. God then breathed life into you. And at that moment, boom, he was 30. A 30-year-old man. He was formed in a natural, as a natural man. Bro, like 6'5", little like Pastor Nick. You know Pastor Nick tall, y'all. Adam didn't go through a process because he was the first man. He didn't go through being a baby, a toddler, a child, a young adult. Now, in the case of Jesus, it was totally different. Jesus went through the process of humanity. This, was, this is why he can identify with everything that we go through. Jesus can identify with us when we are uh, uh, rejected. Jesus can identify with us when we are not loved. He can identify with us in every area of our lives because he himself has gone through it. Adam was already a full grown man physically. Now, after we are born again, the Bible says that we were born into sin and iniquity. The moment we were born again as a believer, as a Christian, as a disciple, as a believer, a process then begins. That moment we were born again as a believer, a process begins. For what? What is that process for? A process to be formed. Not a physical process. Even though physically you're going to go through it, but the formation of a man is going to be spiritually. Meaning you will become what you were created when you were in heaven with God. Hope you follow me on that. You will become what you were when God created you in the spirit dimension. That's a good place to give God the glory right there. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. When we are born again, we are little children. Now, in the spirit dimension, we were given a purpose. Then we came to earth and God says, I'm going to have to process you for you to become what you were in heaven. I don't see no amens or pray gods in the chat. In heaven, this is who you are and what you are. See, in heaven, there is nothing to be made or to grow. Everything in heaven is finished. God needs to process you in the earth so that you can become who he made you in heaven. See, the earth has need of you. Not the person who you think you are. Not the person who they made you on the block. The earth don't need that person. The, God need, the, the earth needs the person that God created millions of years ago. The earth has need of you. There's a purpose. There's a reason why you're here. You're not here just to take up space. All things in heaven are done. So since there is no more growing in heaven, God says, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Tanya, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Willie, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Elder Bradford, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Tina, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Rhonda, I'm going to send you to the earth. They have need of you. God says, Monique, I'm going to send you to the earth. God says, Gail, I'm going to send you to the earth. There's a task that I need you to do. There's something that only you can do. So I'm going to dispatch you unto the earth. 
The moment we hit earth, something happens. Have you ever noticed or wondered why a child cries when they're born? In the physical dimension, they cry. I've never witnessed a baby laughing when they came out of the womb. Have anybody of you been in the birthing center ever seen a baby come out of the womb cry, uh, laughing? Raise your hand because I want to know about it. I've never seen a baby laugh when they came out of the womb. Why is that? Because there's a separation that takes place. There's a separation. There's a cutoff of the umbilical cord from another dimension. As soon as we touch the earth, it's snatched and there is pain. The Bible says that we were born in affliction, born in pain. We were born into affliction. So at that moment that we hit earth, there's a disconnection from the spirit dimension where everything is perfect. Just to get to this place where it's dirty, dark, and sinful. I cry too. The child feels the pain. Did you feel it? That's a little deep. I'm going to try to stay on the surface because I need you to follow me. Well, we're going somewhere. So what is the purpose of your existence? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Some may say, I know God called me to this or that, but I'm not seeing the fulfillment of it. Why is that? I don't understand. I'm going to answer your question. Man was created in the spiritual dimension. OK, we got that, Pastor. Man then was sent to earth and God said that he would form us to fulfill the purpose of why we were created in the spirit millions of years ago. Now, when we get to earth, everything that God dispatches to earth, it comes with a process. It must go through a process. We must go through a process. I did all that teaching for you, for you to see the eternal perspective. We start out and our purpose by the way of grace. I was called to be a preacher, a teacher of the gospel. My assignment on earth is to evangelize, win souls to God through testimony and through his word. That was, that's what my purpose is. When God pulled on me, when he spoke to me, that's what he told me. Let me tell you this. My process for becoming a pastor was painful and still is painful. I lost people I love. I had to walk with just me and God and still do. It gets lonely sometimes. People misunderstand you. And just because they misunderstand you, they, long, they no longer want to be fooled up with you. Process is something else. But God gave me a calling and a purpose to get through that. God gave me the grace to get through that. That was by grace. I didn't earn the right to be a pastor. If I keep it all the way funky with you, while God told me to move forward with pastoring, first of all, I didn't want to be one. Second of all, I was doing things that is unbecoming of a pastor. But that was part of my process. We all have to go through a process. See, pastors won't tell you about that about themselves because pastors are perfect. They don't need grace. They're already perfect. I didn't earn this right. I didn't earn the right to be a pastor. I didn't deserve it. It was given to me by grace. When I give this tes testimony, I tend to, 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 to get emotional because I know the things that God has done for me. I didn't deserve it. He has been good to me. God said, Daniel, you are a pastor. I'm going to make you a pastor. I said, bro, you sure? Are you sure? I didn't pay anything. I didn't do anything to deserve it. I didn't behave the right way all the time. It was by his grace. But check this out. To qualify. To qualify. You got to qualify. For me to operate in my calling and in my purpose, I had to go through the process. What am I trying to say? You can have the greatest potential in life. But if you never go through your process, if you try to skip your process, you will never qualify to do what it is that God called you to do. A lot of people quit because the process is too hard. It's too painful. They go back into the world. They turn their back on God because it's easy. 
They, you have to give up too much. It's a sacrifice. People don't have the slightest idea of what I went through and what others go through to get where they are today. People don't know what I went through to get just to this chapter alone in my life. There was a process. There was a price to pay. Majority of people today do not relate a process to their purpose and calling. People think that purpose is automatic. People think that their calling is automatic. Some say, I'm called to be a teacher. I'm called to be a preacher. I'm called to be a deacon or this or that. Whatever you are called to or whatever your purpose is in life, don't think that it's just going to happen automatically. It takes a process. Text process in the chat. People believe that the moment they are called, they are excluded from process. We are called to the process before we can step into our purpose. Somebody text that in the chat. This is, somebody text good teaching in the chat. We are called to our process before we are called to our purpose. A person that cannot submit to their process, they can't handle the privileges that's going to come with it. God says, Tan, I can get you to a dimension that you've never seen before. I will give you grace and favor for you to handle that I have qualified you for. But you got to get past your process. You will go through the fire and not smell like smoke. You will not get weary and well doing. You won't look like what you've been through. You will need help and no one will help you. We're talking about process now. All of this will teach you. This process will teach you to lean on me, says the Lord. It will teach you to put all your trust in the Lord. It will teach you to come to me and not man. It will teach you to not put man on a pedestal. It will teach you to keep your mouth shut and only come to me. It will teach you that I am who I say I am. It will show you that if God be for you, who can be against you? It will make you become a person that fasts. It will make you become a person that goes into their prayer closet. On a consistent basis. It will make you forgive quickly and love your enemies. It will humble you before the Lord and others. Don't tell me nothing about process. I know all about process. When you look around and thought people that had your back and you realize that they don't. Process will make you have no other choice but to call on the name of Jesus. And God says, now I got her right where I need her to be. Now I have him right where he needs to be. Now he's ready for his purpose. Now she's ready for her calling. See, when you got that DUI, process showed you you ain't supposed to be drinking. See, if you had gotten married before you had sex, you wouldn't have to worry about your other children not having no McDonald's to eat. If they didn't snitch on you, you wouldn't know that you can trust them. This generation does not like process, but process is here to teach us. It's here to mature us. This generation wants everything now. Instant gratification. We got people saying, man, I want a wife. But man, I don't want to work. You got women saying, and men saying, I want children. Okay, do you know the purpose of having children? I want a husband, but they can't cook. They house nasty, they can't keep the house clean. I want a house. Okay, are you taking care of the house that you're renting right now? I want my own ministry. Okay, do you know how to follow? Because before you leave, you have to know how to follow. Are you faithful to the ministry that you are in now? Or are you doing just what you want to do? Who have you followed? Before you leave, you got to follow. It's called a process. People want everything now with no process. And that's the spirit of this world. They want it now. I want sex now. I want money now. I don't care how I get it. I want the bag now. I want it now. People don't think in terms of process. This, this mentality has now come inside of the church. People now want the church and, and the blessings and the prosperities now. They don't think of process because they don't know the necessity of the process. Your process may be painful. But there are so many things that you will learn along the way that you wouldn't have otherwise. So this is how God thinks. We haven't gotten to the fighting for our purpose yet, but we will. 
before we came here to earth, we already had a purpose. Now that we are on earth, God is saying, now I want you to be formed. I want you to be made. This is the making of you. Remember this. Anything, remember this. Anything that comes to earth on time must come by the way of process. Pregnancy is a process. There is a time limit that pregnancy has. Nine months. Anything that comes to earth and it is not on time, that process is defined as being abnormal. Have you ever seen a full grown child come out of a mother's womb? They just pop out and they're a full grown man, full grown woman. You never seen that, right? No. Why? Because that's abnormal. Well, it's abnormal that you get called into ministry and you think that the next day you're supposed to be packing out stadiums. It's abnormal to think that your finances will be great and you don't even give your tithes and offering because people think in terms of the world. I want to make a bag and I want to make it fast. They don't think about process. God can bless you. But if you're not going through a process, you won't be able to handle the millions when they do come. That's why God, I want my own business. OK, well, there's some things you got to do. You got to understand how to run a business first. That's why God will never give you means until your heart changes. You got to go through your process. Everyone has a purpose. You, you, and you. If you have a purpose, you have a process. To have a process is to be in compliance with heaven. If you carry something great in your spirit, you must have a tough process. You must have a tough process. If you carry something great, in your spirit, you must have a tough process. My mother always says that all of her children have a calling on her life. And she says that because she understands and sees the process, the struggles, the storms and tribulations that we go through. People always brag about their calling. They brag about their spiritual gifts. OK, well, show me your process. Show me, show me, show me your purpose. And th th here's the law of process right here. Your process is connected to your purpose. We can't just wake up and say, God called me to preach to the nations and expect to be preaching in Dubai tomorrow. No, there's a process you got to go through. Stop being so hard on yourself. I know you want to be a homeowner. I know you want that happy marriage. I know you want your ministry to be successful. Preach to yourself, Daniel. I know you want these things, but there's a process that you have to go through. There is no overnight millionaires. Nothing happens overnight. And it's for the good of you. There's a process. Most of the processes in my life, they have been painful. I'm used to long suffering. I'm used to pain. God has allowed me to take steps, a series of actions to get me to where I need to be. Every person that has a calling in their life, depending on what their calling is, will determine, depending on what their calling is, it will determine the measure of their process. Big calling, little, little calling, little process. Big calling, big process. If you have never gone through anything, chances are you don't have a big calling on your life. Because the call is determined by your process. God has allowed me to take steps, a series of actions. That's what a process is. It's a series of actions to get us to where we need to be. Why? Because where we're going, where I'm going, my destiny is not a cakewalk. Your destiny is not a cakewalk. Where God has you going, you will need to change your mindset. Lay aside foolish things, foolish behaviors. Walk away from friends. Walk away from family and loved ones. Sometimes you will have to make decisions. Sometimes you will need to invest. A lot of times you will need to make sacrifices. These steps will take you into your destiny. If we are trying to skip steps, Remnant Church, we will avoid reaching our destiny. Text in the chat, can't skip steps. The process will remain until you learn. Your process test will remain before you until you pass the test.
Come on, preach to yourself, Pastor. How many of you told yourself, I've been here before? How many have told yourself, man, I've seen this story before. I've gone through this before. Raise your hand in the chat. Oh, Lord, I've been through this before. Okay, that tells you that you have not learned. When we don't learn, we got to repeat the class. You have not passed your test. God is trying to get you through that process. So we, what we're going to do today, we're going to pray. Because a process can be hard, depending on your calling. But today we're going to go to God in prayer that God may give you the strength for your process. He's preparing you. He's molding you. He's forming you to what you were in heaven so that you can come to the earth and battle and do the same thing. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice receive their destiny. I pray that you make clear that they know what their purpose and destiny and calling is in you. Reveal it to them now. As you reveal their purpose, give them the strength to go through their process. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we pray over tithes and offering, I want to do something different today. If you would like to, after tithes and offering, we're going to go to some separate rooms. And if you would like to discuss this message today, process for purpose. If it spoke to you and you want to talk about 10, 20 minutes about this message, just hang tough. I want you to just hang tough and we're going to talk together as a family about this message. You can share your thoughts. You can share what God spoke to you, but we're going to talk about 10, 20 minutes about this message. So I want you to hang tough so we can do that. And not only that, if you want to join this ministry or need additional prayer, we're going to have some rooms for that as well. So you can join this ministry or if you need additional prayer for God to give you direction on your purpose. Because you may say, Pastor, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my calling is. We're going to pray one-on-one uh, -on -one with you if you just hang tough. So let's go to God and pray over our tithes and offers. Father, thank you for every giver on today. Bless every seed as they give by faith. Meet every need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Fourth of July to each and every one of you. <laughs>